The precast segments are being manufactured in Blairsville, PA. It's a little over 8,000 that have to be uh, constructed or cast for both tunnels. Seven segments that form a 22 diameter, four foot long, one inch thick tunnel segment. So that provides the structural support for the tunnel. Morning. The top line is the slurry feed line, the bottom is the slurry return line. Okay? So as you're constructing tunnel, those have to be extended here. We have water, wastewater, communications, uh, compressed air, electrical. They all have to be extended as the tunnel advance, as the tunnel bore machine advances forward. The segments are, are numbered at uh, appropriate intervals, and that tells us where we are. Okay. As we go in, we're descending at a 6.8% 6, 6 grade. We're going to make a left turn, then a right turn to line up with Stanwick Street. And of course, as I said before, the feed line and the slurry line. And there's a series of pumps that'll help provide the pressure to pump it back to the slurry separation plant. So you'll see up top, I think every five segments is numbered. So right here, we're 20 feet of tunnel constructed. As the tunnel segments are bolted together, this guy marks in the center and at the corners, you can see the G, the G and the G, they match them together. I think we we're, I think about 300, 380, we were under the Equal Resources building. There's 125, so we're at 500 feet. So about segment 80 or so. Remember we were, the Equal Resources building, this, bottom, this, this bore went under the basement slab through the piles. So that basement slab sits on piles that go down to bedrock. So at its minimum, we were 25 feet below that slab to 35 feet as we were descending on a grade. So, so right here, 150, 600 feet, still on that 6% grade when we start to get in that curvature. Right here is the Allegheny, roughly. Okay, start of the river. That's just a geographical reference. It really has no engineering uh, reference. Um, we're below the water table, so you have to design for the weight of the water in the soil, the weight of the water, and the weight of the soil. Water, air, I think these are communications, electrical. So you saw on, that, on the segment carrier some smaller diameter pipes for probably extension of, of compressed air or water. We're into that siltstone and that claystone. So we're in the rock, good rock face here, where we, we, where we bottom out before we start to ascend. The lifts is tunnel segments, about two, three tons each, the heavier sections. Two or three tons, two tons. Okay. Lifts them off, puts them on a conveyor, and then that conveyor transports them up to the front of the machine, just behind the machine. We'll walk up, you can see that. You can get right up front. Once the segments are, are lowered on the conveyor, they're transported sequentially. There's 32 of these hydraulic cylinders that use to push off of the tunnel segments. Remember those, those compression pads? And to steer the machine, you have to adjust the pressure in those cylinders. Horizontal roll, the pitch. And as the machine moves forward, rotating at about a revolution a minute, it creates a four foot gap for the next ring segment to be installed. And it's actually being installed inside the shell of the tunnel boring machine. So the only exposed earth is at the front of the machine. Right up in front, you'll see a big hatch. That's the work chamber. And then there's a, the excavation chamber where that's filled with slurry and material. I think we're probably about 36 PSI, probably about two atmospheres. Uh, where we are here. At the surface, you're roughly 17 at 0.6 PSI. 
to remote two here in the, in the excavation work chamber. The slurry pressure, we can verify that when we ask the operator on the inside. They'll retract the cylinder and they'll use the hydraulic the crane here that'll pick that tunnel, tunnel segment up and put it in place and they'll bolt the next ones together. You can see the fasteners waiting for the next segment to be installed beside it. We're pretty close here. Methane, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, any hydrogen sulfide, oxygen, and carbon, carbon dioxide. You see the actual levels here, the warning and the cutoff. In terms of the, again, 12 hour shift, two 12 hour shifts. We got two qualified operators who the Obiashi Trumbull team were qualified with that are, that are experienced operating a tunnel bore machine. And we have local operating as assistance. Here's our chainage, okay? We're about 107 plus 58. So we're right here, 100 feet from uh, 10th Street bypass wall. It'll do this, as Jeff explained, but rigid this way. So it slipped off, so they're going to jack it up, put it back on again. At first I thought it slipped off the end, but it, it just it didn't slip off the end. It derailed. So they gotta get they gotta get plate jacking plates. Get the jack in. How long do you think, Nick? I don't know. They haven't got it jacked up yet. Could be half hour. Could be three hours. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We walked right underneath, right along the parking lot, the far left part of the parking lot, underneath the Equal Resources building. Then we made a left turn as we were descending, and we made a right turn, and we're probably, I'm going to guess right now, 100 feet from the 10th, 10th Street bypass. Uh, uh, roughly 55 feet below the surface of the water.